Today is National Harm Reduction Day, May 7th, and through this week-long Lunch and Learn webinar series, we hope to provide education, direction, and resources on best harm reduction practices and supports in central Alberta, as well as greater insight on how we support healthier, safer communities for all. This is our fourth and final Lunch and Learn series, and today we'll be discussing harm reduction in the form of safe, sharps, pickup, and disposal. This webinar will be roughly 25 to 30 minutes long, followed by a question period. Uh, please feel free to ask your questions throughout the entire presentation on our Q&A box, uh, and one of our presenters or I will try and answer them at the end there for you. Let me know uh, if you have any other questions throughout, but at this time, let me introduce Aisley Miles, Turning Points Harm Reduction Program Manager. Hello, thanks for joining us today. My name is Aisley Miles, and as Mitch had mentioned, I manage the harm reduction programs in the office here at Turning Point. Our programs are as listed there, and Turning Point used to be known as the Central Alberta AIDS Network. We changed our name a few years ago. We've been doing this work for about 32 years, I believe, or 33 years this year. And our focus on is on providing low barrier access to judgment-free support, including resource, resources, referrals, education, and supplies. So what is harm reduction anyways? Harm reduction is an evidence-based, client-centered approach that seeks to reduce the health and social harms associated with addiction and substance use without necessarily requiring people who use substances to abstain or stop their substance use. Um, we, our services are available to anyone. We welcome anyone to come in and receive that support. If, if our programs aren't for you, uh, we will point you in the direction of somewhere you can receive the supports that you're looking for. And I think next slide. So we're gonna talk about sharps what they look like, how to handle them, and what to do if you don't feel comfortable to do that. So a sharp is often referred, like people often think that sharps are just syringes, but they can be any sharp edged um, object that may be contaminated by blood or bodily fluids. Um, in this instance, oh, sorry, <laughs> I think next slide. Um, people use syringes for a number of reasons. Some of those include um, substance use, hormone replacement therapies, medical conditions such as diabetes, cancer, and arthritis, and for pain management. And there's a number of reasons why people would improperly dispose of their syringes. And some of those reasons are that they don't have um, access to a safe sharps disposal option. Um, they're afraid of being caught with illegal substances or um, supplies and sometimes their belongings are stolen and the person who has taken those belongings will then discard of those syringes in a way that isn't proper. Next slide. Um, so while syringes pose a greater risk, they are not the only potentially harming object requiring safe disposal. Um, this isn't an exhaustive list that's up on the screen, but some of the items include syringes and the caps, pipes, cookers, foil, um, condoms, and then any of the other supplies that we distribute and their packaging. If you want more information, feel free to reach out or ask questions at the end. Next slide. So what is the collection and disposal of sharps and other debris matter? Um, disposing of sharps properly uh, reduces personal harms, public harms, and reduces litter and supports a healthier environment. Next slide. So exposure to another person's sharps and other debris can lead to infections. Um, so before picking up any debris, it's important to know the risks. So for transmission to take place, there must be virus present within the blood or bodily fluid um, that is in the, say, syringe. Um, there must be enough viral level within that blood or bodily fluid to cause an infection. Um, there must be an effective route of transmission and the virus must reach susceptible cells in another person. 
So an exposure to another sharps or other debris can lead to infection, as I had said. Um, some of those infections include HIV, hepatitis C, and hepatitis B. Um, it is important to know that the risk of contracting a bloodborne illness from a needle stick injury is extremely low. Um, that said, it is critical to treat each object as if is it is as if it is infected. Um, and when we're talking about very low as far as like risk when you're experiencing a needle stick injury, hepatitis B has the highest risk, and it's about two to forty percent. Um, hepatitis B is a pretty strong virus outside of the body and can live uh, one week under optimal conditions outside of the body. Hepatitis C risk, um, a transmission of risk with a needle stick injury is about three to 10%, and it's less likely than hepatitis C, or sorry, hepatitis B to survive outside of the body for uh, an extended period of time. And then as far as HIV goes, um, the, the risk is extremely low compared to the hepatitis. Um, it's 0 0.2 to 0.5%, and the virus is super fragile outside of the body, so. As I had mentioned, um, there is a risk when you're presented with um, debris, but those risks are lower than I think people um, imagine them to be. So. so if you find debris but are uneasy picking it up yourself, there are some steps that you can take. Um, if you're in Red Deer, you can call the needle pickup line that's managed by the city. Um, and to do that, they're gonna want you to cover um, the debris that you find with an object to keep everyone safe. Um, and they're going to want you to be as specific as possible when you're on the phone with them and telling them about the location of the debris and then you'd want to tell them what you covered it up with so they're not there looking for it for a while. Um, you can contact them at the numbers that are on the screen. And then if you're in down the downtown core, there are a couple of ways that you can get debris picked up. Um, there's the turning point site liaisons. They're out seven days a week and they operate from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then night reach is out every evening and they operate usually about 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. So there's um, quite a few options there. And then if you're from outside of Red Deer, you can contact your local municipality or local police non-emergency phone number and they'll kind of point you in the right direction from there. Next slide. So safety precautions. If you're choosing to pick up debris, it's recommended to use the following precautions to reduce contact with sharps debris and the risk of injury. So what we do here at Turning Point is that we wear puncture resistant gloves. We use tongs that are silicone coated at the end and we have sharps containers. And when you're picking up debris, you're gonna wanna put the sharps container on a flat surface. You never wanna hold the sharps container while you're doing it. You're going to want to make sure that you place that sharps container near the debris instead of carrying the debris over to the sharps container, if that makes sense. Um, and you're going to want to make sure that you're picking up that debris. If you're thinking of a syringe per se, um, you'd want to pick it up by the plunger end. So that's the end with um, furthest away from the, the needle tip. And you're going to want to put the needle tip into the container first and then close the, the lid on the container before you pick it up. And that'll just reduce um, most of the risk there. You can use uh, sorry, latex gloves or any other kind of gloves. Um, they'll still work and they're just protecting you from those any kind of fluids or anything else that may be there. And then you're going to want to treat all fluids that you come into contact with um, as if they're infected and take precautions before initiating um, any cleanup. Um, after you're done picking up debris, you're always going to want to wash your hands and disinfect the tools that you use. So we usually use like a Lysol wipe or a, there is another type of wipe that we use that is um, strong enough to kill viruses. And then, yeah, I think next slide, we're, we have a video for you guys just kind of demonstrating how you would do this. Um, before you press play, Mitch, sorry, <laughs> there is Another way to pick up sharps if you don't have access to the um, sharps container and tongs, and that's outlined in here, but by no means, if you don't feel okay doing this, then you don't have to. And it's using any hard shelled um, container. So in the video, you will see that I'm using a water bottle and a stick to get the needle in there, but you can use things like a wipe container, a coffee canister, any kind of um, drink container, 
make sure that it has a lid that you can close afterwards. And now you can play the video, sorry. <laughs> So here's a syringe in the grass. Um, this one has the cap on, but sometimes you'll encounter ones that don't have the cap on or that the uh, needle tip is broken off of. And as you can see, the syringe, the container is being placed on the ground. I have gloves on, using tongs, and put it pointy end down into the container, closing the container. And as you can see, the lid is closed and the risk is minimized. And here is the other alternative container you can use, just using a water bottle. Um, it is recommended that you use two sticks and you put the water bottle upright, but I've been doing this for a long time, so and there is a cap on the syringe, so I was okay doing it this way. Um, again, if you're not comfortable, you can call any of the numbers that we had previously talked about. Um, so what happens if you end up getting poked by a needle for whatever reason or some other kind of debris? Um, you're going to want to encourage bleeding at the site of the puncture. So I kind of like, I always show people how to squeeze the site to get as much blood out as possible. And then you're going to want to uh, flush it with water. You can wash your hands with a moderate, or, sorry, mild temperatured water and a mild soap and then dry it, cover it with a bandage, and then you're gonna want to call 811 and they will do an assessment with you and uh, tell you whether you need to go to the hospital. Some other things you can do is just um, any, like any other universal precaution. If you get any kind of splash on your face or whatever, you could do an eye wash, uh, rinse your face off, stuff like that. Um, something I didn't touch on earlier is that if you do encounter bodily fluids and you're wanting to clean them up, you can use bleach and that's uh, nine parts water and one part bleach. And you need to mix it every day because after 24 hours, the bleach isn't as effective. Next slide. So safe disposal options. If you do pick up the syringe or you do find a syringe and you're comfortable dealing with it and now you have this container with a syringe in it, you can bring it back to us at our office. Um, we have drop boxes located around the downtown core as seen in the top right hand photo. There's also a drop box at the overdose prevention site, which is in the top uh, middle photo. Three of the fire halls in Red Deer have drop boxes outside. I do believe one of them is um, getting maintenance right now, and I think that's fire hall number two. Um, and then we also have sharps containers located in high traffic wooded areas with permission from the parks department in Red Deer and that's what you see in the bottom left hand corner there they do have a box number and a phone number so if you find it damaged or it's not not mounted to the tree properly or whatever whatever the case may be you just have to call the number on there let us know the box number and then we'll come and um, do some maintenance on that box or switch it out or whatever the case may be. Um, another thing I would like to add is that you can take containers to pharmacies. They probably won't take the containers with um, like the pop bottles and stuff with syringes in them, but any most of the drop boxes that we have in downtown are have a slot that's big enough that you can put those pop bottles in, or we are happy to take them back at the office. Um, if you are in a rural community, we have satellite sites in a couple of the communities. You can find that map online of where to locate your nearest satellite site, and they will take in your sharps as well. Uh, next slide. Um, so there are a couple other options for debris. Um, and the three organizations that actively clean up needles in Red Deer include us here at Turning Point, the Downtown Business Association, and the City of Red Deer. Um, so the Downtown Business Association has a clean team that works in the parks and in the downtown. Um, and they lead the city on needle debris cleanup in public, in the public. Um, yeah, if you want any of the phone numbers, just let us know and we can connect you with those. 